Thank you very much and please do forgive me as you can hear my voice is a little hoarse um possibly from too much shouting in our city last week but i think i've got enough to last out for the next five minutes so i'm going to start um by introducing myself also as an honorary citizen of the free state of govern and as an honorary citizen of the free state of govern through a collective workers initiative um, uh, as people in the free state of Govan, on the day that the UN declared the designation of the North Bank of the Clyde for COP26, um, as a response to the uh, designation of a United Nations area um, and the massive security presence in the city of thousands of Met police officers, um, a group of people um, coming out of a homeless project and a workers' educational co-op on the south side of Glasgow called Galgale declared a free state, building on a free state that had previously been declared during the building of the M77 motorway. And one of the things they said in the declaration was, we no longer find it reasonable to put our faith elsewhere. There's no one coming. There is only us. And for us, that means each other. And I think that's a really interesting provocation, very place-based, very specific, um, playful, a little clowning. It was a carnival atmosphere. And um, this is my passport. You can probably see it here. I printed it myself. It contains the words of Hamish Henderson. And it says the people of the free state of um, govern passport. This is my evidence of citizenship. And in order to pass over the border into the workshop and the feast room and um, the banqueting hall in the free state of govern, as it was declared, all I had to do was declare myself welcome. Um, so that's as by way of of sharing a little provocation about the way that the provocation of the taking of a patch of land and putting it under an international jurisdiction led to a different provocation, playfully working with what it means to have autonomy, to be able to, to, to dedicate yourself to an educational aim. And it made me think about other declarations in Govan on the South Bank of the Clyde that have been made, including the words of the late great George MacLeod, founder of the Iona community, who said the biggest issue for our world today is how we share our bread. And it made me think that the provocation that is our shared world um, is one to remind ourselves that our world is only shared if we actually share it every day, that we will get good at sharing by practicing it. And it's not about um, talking about sharing, it's about sharing and reflecting on what that meant. Um, 500 metres away from my home is where COP26 met. Um, you needed a passport to get in, you needed um, PCR tests, most people couldn't get in. Um, it was a very exclusive gathering. The majority of people who came here from the Global South um, and Indigenous groups, um, particularly refugees, were not able to get in, weren't able to cross those borders, were excluded. Um, many people didn't actually have their fares paid and the greatest representation at, at COP was of fossil fuel companies and financiers rather than those affected di directly by climate chaos. Staying with us from CADICOM um, uh, Malawi was the head of humanitarian relief and also um, side by side the faith-based initiative who had come as a guest of SCIAF, the equivalent of CAFOD in Scotland. Um, she was a blue zone um, delegate, but she was also dealing with massive climate upheaval in Malawi in the um, Mangochi region whilst she was with us up all night trying to coordinate relief. She was also affected by the war in um, uh, Ethiopia because she wasn't actually able to go back the way she wanted to go back. She had to return home by another way and much later. Um, the COP that she experienced was one of a trade fair. Um, it was an, a lot of different exclusionary spaces where observers could make very little impact on what was going on in the green or the blue zone. But outside, there was another COP 
there was a radical cop going on that was part of a tale of two cities in many ways in that tradition of workers education and citizens education that was part of extending what i've certainly experienced in scotland since 2014 when we had deep political conversations with one another when like for cop you couldn't get a church hall or a community venue for love nor money because everybody wanted to talk politics um, and at the end of that whole process hard as it was only one egg was thrown and we're still able to talk to one another about those differences um, we experienced something similar around Brexit and the results of the Brexit referendum, which were obviously highly contested in Scotland and were not the majority will of the people. So the political education has continued and it just sparked into life when it came to COP26. Um, over 12,000 bed nights were offered for free within the city, developing on from an asylum seeker project, hosting people in individuals' homes that has been going on in the city since 13 of us got together to found that and led by positive action in housing. Yes, there were the people who were often charging in hotels 2,000 pounds a night. Yes, my students couldn't get accommodation for six months for the whole of this semester because the rich governments had bought up their accommodation but actually 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 at the end of the day the people were fed the people were housed people stepped up at 24 hours notice the indigenous peoples um minga indigena um, met and we realized they needed feeding and the people of Kenmuir Street and the south side just got together to pool resources, ask the local um, Asian shops, ask the local Gujwara, ask the local mosque, ask the local churches to pitch in, find a food kitchen and feed the indigenous elders so that they could do their work. So what we saw there was, yes, an image of how to share our world was going on during COP and to how to share it realistically and well, and following many maps that were developed for the sustainable places to do this work. We also saw a great deal of life and vibrancy. It was a highly, um, often carnival, but also fun and moving space. Um, and we saw the ways in which climate justice requires cultural justice. It requires those deep, ancient, enduring practices of hospitality, eating, meeting and greeting, sharing to be part of the daily rhythm of everyone's lives. Um, and so a city that builds on Mary Barber's rent strikes, that builds on Jimmy Reed's lecture to um, Glasgow University on the work of trade unionism, that builds on um, the Iona community's work in Govan, that builds on the work of the Glasgow girls, that builds on the work of the Kenmuir Street um, declaration, these are our neighbours. And that was the COP I experienced. I didn't experience the COP of the green and the blue zone and was relieved to be spared it. What I experienced every day was a new world being shared and made and shared again. I experienced a lot of the brokenness that comes from the exclusions and the grief that is part of climate chaos. But out of that brokenness, I saw something making and healing again. And there were many, many different events that you could look at you know, from Kareem Paul, what's amazingly generous, enough is enough, um, shared through the collective commons, which I'll pop in the chat for you, but also the visit by little Amal as she met us in a park and then dragged a tree behind her until she got to the blue zone and we had to say goodbye to her because she could cross and we couldn't. And it was just like being alongside refugees. So that for me is the provocation. We only share our world if we share it, not just talking about it. And that means doing it. And that means doing it ourselves because we are the people that we've been waiting for. And we are not going to be, and our demands and our, our aims are not going to be met by the structures that are in place at the moment that have not delivered on loss and damage, that haven't delivered for the people who are most vulnerable in this situation. Thank you.